Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. That might be more directed at me than you guys. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a minute, but work's been happening. Uh, speaking of work, I'm at work right now uh, in the workshop because we are getting ready to start body work. So um, I thought I would give a super quick walkthrough, talk about the process and where we are and where we're headed and all that fun stuff. All right, so the big plan, I'm gonna set you down right here. Uh, the big plan is uh, to produce a set of bodywork for the car. Um, it's gonna be carbon fiber and it should be light, but we obviously want it to make, make it needs to be durable, right? It's gonna get hit by cones, hit by people, on and off the car. Um, you know, I have an open trailer, so it needs to it's, it's transport, all those things. So all those are considerations. So, uh, we're making carbon fiber. It's gonna have a, a, a core inside of it to help make it more rigid and uh, hopefully take impacts better. And to get to that point, we kind of need to start off from square one, which is, you know, I've made a, mo a bodywork model uh, in Fusion 360 in the design program. And from that, I cut MBF parts. So I think I put out a video and I think you guys have seen that. So they are here, right? There's one, and a couple more. There's one, there's another side pod. Right here's the big cowl piece. So they are uh, assembled together and they were assembled um, to be like, as they were going to actually be produced. So they were the exact size and everything. And I actually was able to take like the side pod home and hold it up to the frame and make sure everything lined up. So everything checked out, which is good. So now that leads us to how do we take these MDF pieces and turn them into carbon fiber. So in the mold making world, these are what most people would call like um, a buck, like an MDF buck or a pattern or a tool. So I, I always refer to them as bucks. Um, you know, I don't give any bucks. <laughs> so that's what I'm making right now is like the foam, I mean the MDF like pattern, that's the actual piece, you know, it's the male version of the piece. And then um, we're going to make what is the female mold over the top of it. Um, so it's kind of the inverse of the buck. So to do that, if I show you this piece, and it looks huge uh, because it is. So you can kind of see like there's like this line right here. Like that's the actual height of the piece, but I needed some more material to make the uh, molds with. And then everything will get trimmed back to their actual size. So when you see the pieces, they're huge, the car's not that big, it's a tiny car. Um, but yeah, it's gonna get trimmed back. So that's just to give me some room to make the molds and to, and to give me some space to attach stuff to in the future. So anyway, right now, uh, let's see if we go over and look at this one, cause it's upside down. Like the construction's not great. Like, look at that. It is just like cobbled together. But really all we care about is the outside surface so that it is nice and smooth because the condition of that surface will be um, basically how the, the finished part looks. So if there's any scratches or dings, or if it's like, well, we'll fix that later. There's no fixing it later. You fix it now or you live with it. So these pieces are going to get sanded down today um, and get a couple coats of, I'm using a high build primer. So I'm using uh, this stuff from Omni. It's a high build primer. And so we'll do probably quite a few coats of primer over the top of that um, and get it really smooth and really slick and make sure that everything is totally sealed up. And then you have to put a top coat over the top of that. So I'm just using a clear coat because it doesn't have to be like a colored pigment paint. It just needs to be a hard surface and that's what clear coats really are. So it's like a hard finished surface. So that's what this other bottle is. So these are, it's another gallon of like a of a really hard clear coat. So these will get primed, they'll get clear coated. Again, multiple coats of clear coat, um, sanding and wet sanding in between so we get a really nice, super glossy, super smooth finish. And then once that is all done, uh, hopefully it's been on order for a while, it's, it's been delayed, the uh, fiberglass and the polyester resin, all that stuff shows up because we will then make the female mold of these parts. So that gets lots of uh, chop strand mat over the top and polyester resin 
And uh, you know, we'll do that here. We'll do it in the paint booth because that stuff is stinky and caustic and gross. Um, so we'll take plenty of precautions and put, do all that in the paint booth over there. Uh, but once we get kind of like a mold then made out of our MDF bucks, uh, then we'll have the mold. And then from that mold, we can now cast our carbon fiber. So the carbon fiber gets laid in and then we will actually use a vacuum infusion process, which I'll do a video just for that. Um, that should be pretty fun. I've done it on small parts. I haven't done it on anything this big. So uh, gonna be using some kind of new tech that's out there, um, which will be fun. Uh, using some fancy tubes to help suck the air and the epoxy into the carbon fiber. Um, so it'll be all in the mold. So instead of like the traditional wet layup process, which is like you basically butter up the whole thing with epoxy and then lay a sheet of material down and then put more epoxy down and lay another sheet of material down and the whole thing gets wet and nasty. And you typically end up with way too much epoxy for your layup. So you have too much epoxy uh, to carbon in the ratio that ends up with a weaker part, not with a stronger part. So we want to have nice strong parts. So we're going to try to get the optimal carbon fiber to epoxy ratio. And like I said, there'll be a, a layer in the middle um, that'll help add some extra rigidity and strength to it. But for now, for today, there's the here. So like this is the, well, that's not the nose, but it's where the nose will go and it slopes back and it kind of penciled out roughly where the cockpit gets cut out right there. So that is the cowl piece. Like I said, you know, this is all you can see. I just kind of like roughed over with the round with a roundover bit, and there's like a gash right there. All this needs to get smoothed and sanded out. Uh, any hard edges broken over, and then uh, a couple coats of primer, and then just keep repeating that process till everything looks awesome. But anyway, that's the plan for today: is to try to get these all sanded up. Any little voids in the glue up joints need to get filled. Uh, yeah, a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do, but still making progress and the car's at home and it's standing on its own. It's a rolling chassis now. Um, I just need to finish up the steering box, steering box mount and the steering shaft mount. And once those are attached, make a couple little adapters for the steering rack to get it to the right width so we don't have any bump steer and then attach the uh, tie rods to the steering rack and to the to the hubs and then I can actually steer the car around and so everything is progressing um, it is already um, first couple days into February though so kind of behind the ball so lots of a lot of work to do but hopefully it will come together quick and hopefully uh, my shipping gets done and we get that order of uh, fiberglass because I'm gonna need that soon hopefully next weekend or the following Soon, soon, soon. Fingers crossed. That was me. This is as much as I can frost my fingers. My fingers don't work. This is it. So that's fingers crossed. We'll uh, we'll see what happens in the future. All right, guys. Bye.